here last week. But Oh, yeah, that's my question. No. About one, two. Do you want to one or do you want two? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Everybody else is here, right? Oh, that's why you guys weren't here. Look out, still trying to sing out. What's that? Didn't like me, no. The other day I went in our bedroom and I was looking for something and, and I said, you know, I, I walk in there and then I'm, now what did I come in here for? You know, and, and Diane says, well, you're always looking for the hereafter. <laughs> yeah. I'm having trouble with the hereafter. And that gets annoying though too. You, you, you have something in your mind, you go in there to get it and everything else, and you go in there and your mind flatlines. So then you gotta go through each item in the room to see what was it really what you came in there for. Anyways, um, we're only gonna take a few verses today, um, and uh, we're gonna uh, go from 21 to 24. It's so packed full of um, information uh, here um, in. Um, the uh, uh, circumcision of Christ, uh, the purification of Mary, and also the dedication of Christ, or the dedication of the firstborn. And uh, and so I did want to you know cover that. And Simeon and Anna, uh, Simeon alone is packed full of uh, information. Um, and so um, a great study. Um, but um, anyways, let's take a look before we get into last week's stuff. I, mean, I want to read these verses. I want you to kind of ponder on them for a few as we're going along. It says, when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus. He was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young men. Pigeons. Um, and so last week we talked about uh, the angels, uh, you know, announcing to the shepherds uh, of the birth of Christ, uh, that proclamation. Uh, and so we have, uh, you know, the proclamation to sinners because shepherds were, um, you know, they missed all the uh, ceremonial. Uh, Functions and the, uh, the worship services and everything because you know tending sheep takes a lot. Uh, you know you're you know 12 hours a day or so, or, and then you gotta sleep some, and so it's around the clock type of thing and to protect the sheep and make sure the animals and stuff don't get at the sheep and so it takes a lot and 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 so it's you know and they were considered sinners because they were ceremonially unclean. They couldn't come into the temple. Um, and uh, the next one is the proclamation of reconciliation. You know, how we are reconciled back to God uh, through Christ. And uh, he bridges that gap. Um, you know, for, uh, and then the last one is the proclamation of, of the heart. And uh, where Mary pondered these things, uh, everything that was happening. That's what mothers do, right? I mean, you know. Your dad doesn't show, you know, all the pictures and everything of growing up and all this and that, you know. Dad's the old tough guy and everything, he grunts now and then. Uh, but uh, mom, you know, you know, she has all the memories and all the pictures and all, oh, look at how cute he was right there. Oh, yeah. You know, and going back to all the memories and, and, and things like that. And, yeah. um, and here with Mary, you know, with, with, with the shepherd ran in there and to worship the... Savior, and then they were explaining what happened and how they knew, and 
and the angels coming down, and, and it was just, and Mary, humble as she was, just pondered all this in her heart. And uh, so that was last week's um, um, message. And uh, so this week, what do you think of my new introduction? I like that. Huh? I'm getting, getting fancier here. Getting fancier. All right. Whoop, let me back up somewhere. All right. So we see here that, you know, St. Augustine has said that the new is the old concealed. The old is the new revealed. Right? And you can't really have one without the other. Um, and a lot of people, you know, we, we get, actually talked about that at our Thursday night Bible study about, you know, some of you are saying, well, you, well, what you need right now is just, you need a New Testament. You don't need the Old Testament. That stuff's all done away with it. But, you know, the Old Testament explains everything what's happening in the New Testament. You, you're not going to understand what's happening in the New Testament if you don't look back at the Old Testament on what's going on. You know, and the coming of the Messiah and the prophecies of the Messiah coming. Uh, coming. And so here we have... Um, with this, you know, these just few verses here, you know, packed full of things of the Old Testament, you know, especially the laws. You know, and Christ came to what? Fulfill the laws, right? Not abolish them, but he fulfilled the laws. And, uh, and so, <clears throat> this, is a, this, ex this expression, the new is the old concealed, the old is the new revealed, uh, expresses remarkable way in which the two testaments of the Bible are so closely interrelated, all right, um, with each other. You know, it's kind of like, you know, fitting in the, like a glove, you know, kind of fit right together, weaves in, you know, they're in, you know, interlocked. And, uh, and so you can't really have one without the other. And so, and remember when um, Mary uh, um, singing the Magnificat, in which she rejoiced in the mercy of God, uh, that is from generation to generation, she sang of the remembrance of God's ancient promises uh, to the patriarchs. All right, and that's what we saw um, a few weeks ago. Here, um, He has helped His servant Israel in the remembrance of His mercy, as He spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Right? And here's the promises, you know, coming true of the coming Messiah. That Christ has been born. You had the proclamation last week. You know, of the angel proclaiming that the Savior has been born in the city of David. Um, and so, but he was born under the law. Do you remember when we did Galatians way back when? Um... But uh, when the fullness of time has come, God set forth his son, born of a woman, and born underneath uh, under the law. And then I'm going to finish up with 5, 6, and 7 of that, those verses of uh, Galatians 4, 4 through 7. And so, uh, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that they might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through who? Through Christ. Amen. Through Christ. Amen. And so, and, and we look here in these verses too, Mary and Joseph were godly parents. And they raised their children, and especially the firstborn, uh, well, Mary's firstborn, not Joseph, but, um, you know, in a godly home and um, obeying the laws of God. And that's what we need today is, is more godly homes, right, that are having their devotion time, that are raising their kids to follow Christ. And, and let me tell you, parents and grandparents, your kids copy everything that you do. And everything that you say. My grandson now calls me Mr. <laughs> and I wonder why, because of his mother saying, okay, Mr., you know, and stuff like that, you know, joking around. And then I'll say to Mally, I said, come on, Mally, over there. And Mally said, uh uh. And he points this way, you know. And so, I mean, I'm trying to get him to do one thing, he does nothing, but he learns this thing from his, his parents. They pick up so quick. 
uh, and, and others, you know, and, and, and Paul Paul especially, um, and my little quirks and things. And, but our children, you know, follow our footsteps, and we're not consistent um, with going to church and, and reading our Bibles and praying, uh, you know, personally and family, uh, and, you know, in a group. You know, your kids aren't going to be that. They're not going to be consistent. You know, it's kind of like a stop and go type of thing. They'll, they'll come and they'll go. They'll stop and they'll go. And, and, and it, it, it becomes a traditional thing and nothing from the heart. You know, and because, our, again, our kids follow what we do, what we teach, um, and, they, and they follow us. A lot of times they don't like the, 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 the things that we try teaching them, but we need to be consistent with our teachings um, and with our actions. Because again, you don't have to say anything to your kids. They will watch you. They will see everything. You know, and, and they pick up on a lot of things quickly. But Mary and Joseph were godly parents. And they obeyed the letter of the law to the They did everything according to God's word. And that's what we're going to see here. Um, and the, the, the first point I have is the law of circumcision. All right? It was um, remember um, we talked about that back when we talked about John the Baptist being circumcised. Um, the word is peri to you know to cut around. Uh, since by right of circumcision a man was separated from the unclean world and dedicated um, by the word uh, to, to is transferred to denote the extinguishing of lust and removal of sin, to cut off, to cut around, you know. And it was a symbolism, you know, because uh, circumcision was given to the Jews. Uh, God wanted all males to be circumcised. Yes. Um, and so circumcision was required to all males. And this is where um, in Genesis uh, 17, uh, 10, uh, and I'm going to read uh, from verse 9, of that to 14. It says, And God said to Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee and their generation. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man a child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generation. He that is born in the house or bought with money or any stranger which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with the money must uh, um, must needs be circumcised. And any and, and my servant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man child who, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people, and he shall um, have broken my covenant. Right? And so circumcision was initiated by God for basically three reasons. And the first one, of course, was health reasons. And you notice how that, the, if you look at, go back in history and how the Jewish people, and then how you look at some of the, um, no, the Gentiles lived and everything, and the Jewish people were more healthier on their eating habits, you know, and, and so I remember Daniel um, in front of uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar and stuff, and, and uh, they wanted to give him the king's portions, and what did he say? You know, he said, hey, let's do it this way, you know, let's try this. If we, we eat our vegetables and stuff like that, and we'll show you, you know, the difference and stuff, and so they, they agreed, because he said, if you don't see anything, then we'll go ahead and, and eat uh, the king's portions. But what happened was they saw the difference, and they saw how healthier yes. they were according to their folks. And so it, it's a health issue um, uh, and for cleanliness, but it was also a sign of the Abrahamic covenant between God and his people, and marked Israel as a nation, a national identity. And circumcision also serves as a spiritual object lesson uh, graphically illustrated man's need for cleansing from depravity of sin which passes on to each succeeding generation through procreation. All right? And so circumcision was a physical symbol of the spiritual cleansing of the heart that takes place at salvation. And so it was those three uh, things. 
one for the health, one for the uh, uh, national identity of Israel, but also the symbolic of the depravity of man because of the depravity of, of sin. And because it, you know, with Adam and Eve fell, it went on all of us. And we're born into sin. And you look at a two-year-old, you'll see the sinful nature right up, personal and close. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be a <laughs> Or, you give me that back, smack! <laughs> Knock them out, you know, and you see the fights, right? I mean, how many of you have seen the Sunday night fights? All right, all right, all right. It's in the home, isn't it? I got, I got um, a, a grandson and, a, and his own going at it, neck and neck. I'll be on the phone. It's always when I'm on the phone that they fight. And then Mally will come over there, Papa! And then he'll come over there, will you do something with your grandsons? <laughs> and I'm the referee with the whistle. <laughs> Get back in your corners now. We're not speaking of this. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the sinful nature. It's all about I, I. No one. And so, when we look here, well, let, me, let me go back. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Um, look at verse 21. When eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel which he was conceived in the womb. All right? And so, um, and then going to um, Deuteronomy 36, uh, it says, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, that thou may livest. All right? And so we have the circumcision of the heart, cutting away of the sin. And what did Christ come to do? But to save us, right? The flesh was nailed to the cross. And so in eight days, we see... Abraham was circumcised and received a new name. Uh, we see that in Genesis uh, 17, 5 and 23. Moses was circumcised and received a new name, um, uh, a new name right after, eight, after uh, uh, his birth. On the eighth day, the amount of, remember we talked about on the eighth day, the amount of profrobin, um, profrobin pres, uh, present actually is elevated above 100% of normal and it's the only day in the male's life in which this will be the case under normal conditions. On the eighth day, vitamin K and prothrombin are at their peaks. And so God knew all this way before scientists and everything else, and he'd already put it into place. You know, and so on the eighth day, when they, when they cut around the skin, they, it would uh, heal quicker, you know, because of um, the healing properties with the vitamin and K. You know, they wouldn't bleed for a long period of time. Um, and so God already had that instilled, but again, Mary and Joseph, again, why would Jesus, the Son of God, the sinless one, need to be circumcised? <coughs> because he is to fill all righteousness. Just like at his baptism. Remember when he came? And John saw him, and John says, I need to be baptized by you. You know, I'm not even worthy to unloosen your shoes or your sandals. And, he, and look what he tells him. And Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so. Now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. You know, he came to fulfill the law. He came to fulfill the law. And so, um, when Mary and Joseph brought him in on eight days, now you've got to notice, too, that this is not all in a sequence. There's days in between his circumcision and her purification. And we'll come to that in, in just a minute. But it's not like boom, 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 boom. A lot of times when we're reading Scripture, when we think, okay, this is just happening right away, you know, right in a row here, but it's not. There's days... Okay, he had, uh, from his birth to, um, to the circumcision, there was how many days? Eight. Eight days. Then from there to the purification was 33 days for a male child. A birth purification of after giving birth um, to a child. You had to wait seven days, um, just like you would for a menstruation, uh, for the ceremonial cleansing. 
And then you had to wait another additional 33 days for a male child. But for a female child, it was 66 days. And we'll get to that too. Um, but anyway, Jesus we talked about back um, a few weeks ago. Yahweh saved, just like the Hebrew name Joshua. And his fitting name for the one who was born to save his people from their sins. Just like in Matthew 1.21. Uh, and she will bring forth a son and she shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. So now we come to the law of purification. Uh, purification, the Greek word is katharisimo, a cleansing, a purification, a ritual purgation or washing. The washing of the Jews before and after their meals, Levitical purification of women after childbirth, a cleansing from the guilt of sin wrought on by the expiatory sacrifice of Christ. Like circumcision, a woman's purification after childbirth illustrated the need for cleansing from sin. From sin. <clears throat> and if there's also a ceremonial and a moral purification. And this is in Leviticus. Again, remember, we have godly parents here following the law. You know, right? And because Jesus came to fulfill the law and, and not to uh, take away from it or to abolish it. But he came to fulfill the law. And so we have in Leviticus 12, 4, and I'm going to read from 1 to 5. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman has conceived and born a male child, and she shall be unclean seven days, as in the days of her customary impurity uh, she shall be unclean. And on the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. She then continues in the blood of her purification thirty-three days. She shall not touch anything, uh, any hollow thing, nor come in, uh, into the sanctuary until the days of her purification are fulfilled. But if she bears a female child, then she shall be unclean two weeks. Not the seven days, but two weeks. As her customary impurity, and she shall continue in the blood of her purification sixty-six days for having a female child. So then you get to ask ourselves, <laughs> why the extra day for a female? Well, Scripture really doesn't cover that in, in great detail on that, but there could be two possible answers. The first one is to take the place of circumcision. To take the place of circumcision. Uh, because, again, remember that represented or symbolizing the sin and depravity. Okay, the cutting away of the sin and depravity. <coughs> and so, because a woman... <coughs> have a part, uh, you know, it's it, uh, extra, extra, extra days. But now, um, uh, what it also could, the second thing is, it could may reflect the, that the stigma on women stemming from Eve leading the human race into sin. Um, where we see in First uh, Timothy 2.14, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into <coughs> transgression. Um, that stigma, of course, is removed. But why is it removed? How is it removed? It is removed when they're in Christ. In Christ. And so then we have the great news, because while Eve, a woman, led the human race in, you know, into sin... Now those godly women that are in Christ have great influence on their children. Back in the day, who taught them school? Moms. Who raised the kids? Moms. What great influence does a mother have on her children? Who do the kids always go to when they're hurt? Mom. Mom. Dad's sitting there, suck it up, drive on. You're a man. Don't let me see a chair come out of those eyes. And mom's over there, shut up. And 
well, the firstborn male, but also of what? Also of beasts. All right? And so then we have Exodus 13, which is right there, you see there. Um, and it shall be when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he uh, swore to you and your fathers and to give it to you, that you shall set apart to the Lord all that opens the womb, that is every firstborn that comes from an animal which you have. The male shall be the Lord's. For every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with the lamb. And if you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. And all the firstborn of men among your sons you shall redeem. So it shall be when your sons ask you in time to come, saying, What is this you shall say to them? By strength of hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and it came to pass when Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go that the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all males that open the womb, but all the firstborns of my sons are redeemed. Are redeemed. And see what I'm saying is if you, you, know, if you didn't know the Old Testament or didn't have the Old Testament, this stuff is not going to make any sense to you. Why are they doing this? You know, what law is of the circumcision? Why do they circumcise? What is the purification? What is the, uh, the, the law of the firstborn? You know, why are they doing all this? So if you didn't have the Old Testament, you're just saying, oh, well, 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 you've got to where are you going to get all this other information from? Why are they doing all this stuff? See, you see what I'm saying? How they inter, interconnect with one another? And so you can't have one without the other. So um, to set a part of the first um, born male was to for priestly service since priests came through the line of Levi. Jesus was in the line of Judah. The Levites took place of the firstborn of the rest of the tribe by being devoted to the service of God and that would be in Numbers 3, 12, and 13. But Mary and Joseph also pay, right, this is in, in the Old Testament too, and, and by law, five shekels for the dedication of his of their child. Uh, so, you know, the dedicated, they also pay five uh, of, of shekels uh, for that. Um, a redemption fee for Jesus as they did everything according to the law of the Lord. And that again is in Numbers 18, uh, 15 through 16. And then you have the pair of turtle doves. Now notice, let's, let's finish up here. And it is written, um, all right, let me back up, 22, and when the days of purification according to the law of Moses was accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And uh, to other to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Okay? And why turtle doves and young pigeons? Why, why those two? Um, because you're, you're supposed to have um, you know, done a, uh, for a uh, uh, burnt offering and also for a sin offering, uh, shall she bring um, a lamb. But if you couldn't afford a lamb, then you did two turtle doves or two young pigeons. And so, um, and it showed that they were poor. They were poor. And so Christ came to the humble, the poor. And he, he, he kind of identifies with us. You know, in his, in his, um, you know, he's not rich, he's not famous, you know, he, of course he's famous, but, you know, he's not rich, he's not, you know, he didn't come to the Pharisees, he didn't come to the kings, he didn't come, he came to, what, sinners first, shepherds, yeah. and, and, and he came also to, you know, Mary and Joseph, but they were poor. Uh, just, you know, he was a carpenter. Carpenters didn't make much money, you know, they don't make much money now, you know, very <laughs> doctor the Lord. And they do, um, sometimes they do better work too, right? But, um, so we see in Leviticus um, 12, 6, it says, When the days of her purifications are fulfilled, 
Whether for a son or a daughter, she shall bring to the priest a lamb for the first year as a burnt offering and young pigeon or a turtle dove as a sin offering to the door of the tabernacle of meeting. All right. So Mary's ceremonial uncleanness, uh, unclean, uncleanness pictures sin. All right. And so Mary's sacrifice symbolized the ultimate sacrifice for sin, which was what? Her son. Her son dying on the cross uh, is, the, is the ultimate sacrifice. So you wouldn't need a lamb. You wouldn't need turtle doves. You wouldn't need any other sacrifice because Christ came to pay the price. And uh, so the sacrifice granted direct access to God, symbolized by the tearing of the temple, uh, tearing of the veil of the temple when Christ was crucified, and the, 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 you know, the, between the holy the holy place and the holy of holies, there was the veil right there, and when Christ was crucified on there, the earth shook, darkness came, and the veil of the temple was ripped to giving us what? Total access to the Father. And we see that in uh, Matthew 27, 51. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks split. We didn't need a high, you know, because Christ has become now our high priest. Amen. We don't need to go to a priest. Yep. We can confess our sins right here sitting in the pew, right? Yep. You know, sitting in the bathroom. Yep. You know, anywhere we can confess uh, and talk to the Lord. And so we have that access uh, to Him. And this also shows what else that I've been saying for years and years and years about how the Christmas story is kind of backwards a little bit there. If there, now let me give, give this out there, and I want you guys to play a little game here. Right? They were poor, correct? Yes. They offered for her purification, or they gave five shekels for you know, his dedication, but um, the, the burn offering and the sin offering, right? two turtle doves or, or you know, two fish. What else does this show that has not happened yeah. It's kind of like right now and by April 15th. Taxes. All right. So, what happens? Now, a lot of you get a what? Refund. Refund, and you're all happy. Those who owe, wait until April 15th. <laughs> But those who get, file in January. Yeah. But what has not happened yet? Who has not come? Jesus hasn't come. No, he came. The wise men. The wise men have not come. Because if they came, then they would have had enough money to buy a lamb and not the turtle dove. <coughs> and when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented him gold. gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Yeah. So they have not come yet because and all that gold, they could afford a lamb. But they didn't have that. Again, the wise men didn't come until almost two years yeah. Yeah. after yeah. the birth yeah. of Christ. And, and so, you see how these are connecting and how the dots are kind of, you know, some of your questions you might have had and how the story is un unfolding. And uh, so, let me see where I'm at here. Uh, I get rattling on and everything, then I lose my place in the notes. All right. Here we are. Right? A couple of years old, and, and the wise men met him at his house. House, at a house, right. And it said the child. Yes. Right. And so, in, you know, so we have the, um, he came to fulfill the law, okay? He was born of a woman, born underneath the law, what Galatia, what Paul had stated before. Here is proof of born under the law, and they followed the law precisely to fulfill it. Even when Christ was baptized, you know, he was showing us what we are supposed to do as believers. Did he need to be baptized? No. no. Did he need to confess his sins? No. no. Because he was perfect. Yes. But he is our example. Yes. You know, 
you know, what I want to do. So Christ fulfilled the law of circumcision by cleansing us from the depravity of sin by nailing the flesh to the cross. Yes. Christ fulfilled the law of purification. We are purged of our sins by his sacrifice. He is the unblemished lamb of God. Amen. He is the perfect one that yes. took on the sins of the world. Christ fulfilled the law of the firstborn male. He is God's only begotten Son and the firstborn of every creature. He is the firstborn of the resurrection. He is, you know, and so He is the preeminent Christ. He died and rose again and He lives forevermore. Amen? Amen. We are sinners falling short of the glory of God and the wages of of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And he demonstrated his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And in that if we confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised them from the dead, that thou shall be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I ask you now, come to the Savior today. For he is waiting for you. He had fulfilled the law and he took your place. For you can one day be with Amen. We're going to sing this last hymn, Acapulco.